Hey everyone, in today's tutorial, you're going to learn how to integrate the powerful Dash AG grid into the Visro data app library. Visro is a high level Python framework built on top of Plotly and Dash for quick and easy creation of multi page data web apps. Here to share more about this new feature integration and walk us through a few examples is Max Schultz, a software engineer who is actively contributing to Visro. Hi, Max. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks. I'm very excited to be here. And thanks for having me. Likewise. Likewise, Max. Thank you for coming. Uh, so, Max, what, what do you plan to show us today? So, um, today I'm going to show you how to use the Dash AG Grid um, in Visro. And I'll try to do that with three short examples that uh, build on top of each other. Uh, we'll start with a basic example um, that just gets the Dash AG Grid running. Then we'll take a look at a few customizations. Um, and finally, we'll actually see how we can make the AG Grid interact with other components in the dashboard. And uh, for every um, example, I've prepared a little script that I'm already running um, so we can easily inspect um, the output. And uh, all three examples are incremental. So if you try to follow along, that should be possible because everything is just additive. All right, well, sounds good, Max. Um, eager to see these examples live. So the floor is yours. Cool. So uh, let's start with the first example. Um, and let's switch to the code editor. So the first example, what we see here is mostly actually just a plain vanilla simple uh, Visero dashboard. For those that are not entirely familiar with it, we have some data, we create a page, we add components to the page, we add um, the page to the dashboard, and then finally we, we run the dashboard. But what I want to particularly focus on today is how we add the AG Grid component. So how you add the AG Grid component to the dashboard is by basically importing the Visro model AG Grid and adding it under the component attribute of the page. Um, you don't have to do much more than that. So then there's really just two arguments to it. You could give your AG Grid a title, which is what is going to appear um, above the table. Um, and you need to enter a function into the figure attribute. Um, the function here, it's a dash AG grid function, can be imported from Visro tables. And that's really just it. The final thing we need to do is we need to provide it with data, the data we've uh, loaded here in line six, and we add, add it under the data frame argument. And so you don't really... even have to you don't even have to define the, the the rows and the columns. You just give it the data frame and it will do everything by its own. Exactly. And actually, good that you mentioned that, because that is basically the only key difference between the Dash AG Grid as you would use it in Dash. Um, here, you can provide a Pandas data frame and nothing else, and it will render on the screen. Um, uh, what I should also mention is I've just added it here to make it clear. Um, it, uh, the Dash AG Grid works well with um, other Visero components, such as the filter, so you could filter um, the, the dash AG grid with one of the Visro native components. Um, but let's inspect the result. Um, so we see here we have our dash AG grid rendering. Um, ultimately, it is really a table, but it's a table that comes with quite a bit uh, of powerful functionality. So some a, a dash AG grid users will recognize that you can, for example, um, sort, sort the columns by clicking on them. That's what I'm doing here. Or you can, for example, open a filter flyout where you could filter the content of a certain column for a certain value. Could you um, move the columns around, like change the, the order of the columns? Yes, nice. that's also possible. And you can also resize them. Um, nice. It's probably something not every user will want to do, but it's something if some you want to kind of put a focus on something, you can do yeah. as well, yes. Yeah. Um, maybe one additional thing I should mention is that uh, an addition Visro has made is that um, as soon as, uh, because you provide Pandas data frames in your configuration, as soon as it recognizes a um, Pandas date time column, it will format it as an AG grid date string, um, as we do in this example, such right. that the filtering actually works with a calendar flyout. Um, in case people do not like that, they could just transform it to a string, and then you would just have, for example, a year string in this column. Right. Now, the filter that you added, that's the automatic addition of the dropdown, right? Exactly. And this is Visro functionality. So we can see here we filter, say, for Africa and um, Europe. 
And then all the values we see here will either be Africa or Europe, but it is not to be confused with the filter that we can choose natively from the dash AGV grid. So you can do both, whatever maybe suits you better in how you want to control your dashboard. Cool. And so to add, if we can go back to the code to add this drop down, the only thing we need to do is on line 18, you just say ver, uh, visual model dot filter. And we say what it's filtering, which is the continent columns. Exactly. There's a few more arguments if you like. In this case, we don't we haven't provided a target, so it will filter all um, components that have this column in their data frame. Okay. Um, had we more components, say more graphs or other things, we could also target a subset of them if we wouldn't want to filter everything. Perfect. Well, thank you for this uh, beautiful example. And the next example that we have? Yeah, so the next example is where we say um, we do some enhancements. So maybe actually let me switch back quickly to the basic example. There's a few things we would probably immediately say we don't like quite as much. It's the life expectancy column is not so easily comparable because here it has a lot of digits. The GDP per capita does, doesn't have um, 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 a currency. Um, so these are things that are probably um, needing to be changed in a lot of AG right. grids. So right. what I'm going to show you is how to do just that. Um, I haven't changed the example. I've just added um, basically two things to it. I've added here uh, a few more um, configurations to the dash AG grid functions, and I've um, added a parameter. Um, let's not focus on the parameter for now. I'm going to talk to uh, about that later, but let's focus on the two additional arguments I've added here. So those arguments, column devs and dash grid options are actually nothing special in Visro or something that Visro added. It is essentially arguments of the dash AG grid. Right. So whenever you want to customize something, um, you can just look up in the dash AG grid documentation what you would like to change, and you can use those arguments here. And uh, Visro supports almost all arguments that are uh, available in the dash AG grid. Okay. Really nice. So in this case, you just you just define the field of each column, and what you were going to say something about the dollar sign. Exactly. So um, just as a toy example, um, maybe I've also didn't like that it had all the columns before in the example. So now I can uh, with the column devs argument something that is actually populated by default. If we weren't populating it, you can sort of manually se select. And what I'm doing here is I'm selecting the columns that I would like to keep. So country. Mm -hmm continent life expectancy. And in some cases, I'm add, adding actually some formatting. Again, the formatting is nothing, nothing special to Visro. You can look up in the, in the dash AG grid docs, various ways of formatting your column content. Um, but what is special to Visro is um, that we've defined uh, or that we've predefined a few cell data types okay. that make our better, essentially quality of life um, changes. Yeah. Uh, what we've defined is the cell data type numeric, dollar, euro, and percentage. And what they do is they follow the equivalent or the column that, that, they, are that they are targeting in exactly that way. So maybe let's expect uh, the results for that. We go to the enhanced grid. We see we, fo um, we formatted right. the life expectancy column as numeric. And now we have a beautiful aligned column because we only have one digit. Uh, and everything um, is basically bel uh, aligned on the on yeah. the column line. Yeah, and and Mac, numeric means that it's always going to give you only one decimal point beyond. Exactly. Um, if you wanted something different, there's ways to customize that. But usually, as like a quick win to make the column more readable, we've we've opted for for one digit after cool. the comma. Um, something similar, for example, for the GDP per capita column, where we've chosen dollar, where it formats it with a dollar sign and two digits after the comma. Very nice. Perfect. Um, so yeah, you see that um, it's possible to do this um, quite quickly by just using the natural arguments of the dash AG grid. Let me go back to the example. We've also selected um, a second um, option or customization where we said, mm, maybe we don't like the pagination, which is actually a default setting that Visra has turned on. Okay. Um, but we want to set it to false. But we want to leave the choice to the um, uh, um, to the user, and so what, what I've done here is I've added um, this as an act, ad additional option to the dash AG grid. But I've also added a parameter 
to control that option. And oh, okay. for those that have watched your previous um, tutorial on charming data, they will know that this is the way you can actually alter the arguments to the functions you provide. Very nice. So this parameter, this is going to be a radio item. Uh, what are the values for the true or false, right? Are going to be the values of the radio item? Exactly. So um, the radio item essentially says you can select true or false. And what I'm going to target is the AG grid dash grid options pagination. And it oh, will nice. essentially insert the different value based on the user's choice. All right. Let me see. Let me see the live example. I haven't seen this yet. It's exciting. So for example, here it's set to true and we see we have some pagination if yeah. this is what we want. But if we set it to false, oh, we wow. do not have a pagination anymore and we have a very long scroll. Yeah, so to summarize, um, the dash AG grid options are available in the uh, visual versions of it, and you can use parameters to control those options. Cool. Thanks for, for showing us that example. Um, what about Max? I know there's a third example where you mentioned something about actions. Uh, yes, exactly. So uh, let's already jump to the dashboard of the third example um, to show you what I mean with that. So you see most of the page is the same, but we've added um, a second component, which is a bubble chart. Um, and what I'm going to show you is how to make the AG grid, which is here on top, interact with the bubble chart. Okay. So for example, when I click here on um, Asia in this row, it will filter the bubble chart for all bubbles that contain Asia or Asian countries. Right. If I, for example, click on Albania, it will filter the bubble chart for the one country that contains Albania. Okay. Um, so how is this done? Um, let's jump to the code of the third example. And um, you will see, again, it's the same example with a few things added. So here at the bottom, you see we've added a second component, which is the bubble chart you've seen below the AG grid. Um, and it's essentially all that was necessary to create this interaction is adding um, um, this action model in the actions attribute of the AG grid. Um, if you've seen uh, the previous tutorial on charming data about actions, you will know that every Visera model comes uh, with an actions argument. And the AG grid is no different. And under this um, actions argument, you can add the action model with certain functions, Python functions to be carried out uh, when that model is triggered. Uh, in case of the AG grid, the trigger is you clicking into a cell. And thus, you clicking into a cell of the AG grid will carry out this uh, filter interaction function, which in this case targets the bubble chart, which is the graph we've just added. OK, so for, for those who didn't see the last video, a filter interaction is not something they have to build. They just import it at the beginning of the code, right? Exactly. From visual actions, import filter action. Great. Filter and then like you said, and like you said, they don't have to trigger. They don't have to define what, what triggers uh, this action, it's already defined by Visero by yourself. All you need to do, the, the trigger is the, the cell data that was clicked on. And so the only thing they really need to define is the target, which in this case you say was the ID of the graph. But in fact, they're not filtering the graph, they're filtering the data of the graph, right? The data frame. Uh, exactly, yes. Okay, beautiful. Um, and if we um, inspect it again, we can see how it works in detail. So we can refresh it by just reloading the page. Um, and you see that it uh, always filters the target data frame in the column you've clicked on. So if I click right. on um, a cell in the continent column, it will filter the target data frame's continent column for the content. In this case, let's say right. Africa. It yeah. will do so um, the same, for example, for life expectancy. So if I click on a single cell here, it will filter the target data frame in the life expectancy column for 42.7. In this case, there's only one data point left. So there's only one bubble we see. Um, but of course, there could be different cases where this is different. Right, because if certain, there's like two or three countries the same share the same life expectancy, we will expect those two, three countries on the bubble chart. Exactly. Nice. All right, really cool. Thank you for sharing, Max. I appreciate it. So just to remind our uh, viewers that we are going to share this code under the video. Um, and to learn more about Visro and start using it, please visit the docs uh, in the link under the video. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Uh, Max, any final words? Uh, well, 
thanks again for having me and uh, do check out Visro. Um, we're always really, really happy for any feedback or questions. Um, you can uh, contact us on our, on our GitHub page under the issues um, tab or on the Plotly forums. In both places, we are trying to answer as soon as possible uh, to any questions you might have. Thank you, Max. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.